So you're thinking of breeding your dog? Let me tell you nine things you need to consider before going ahead with that. Number one, risking your dam's health. Research her pedigree and your stud's pedigree make absolute certainty that they will produce healthy offspring. How do you do that? Here you go. There is a DNA test. Well, there actually are several, uh, well, two major companies that provide breeders with genetic testing of over 180 different disorders that your dog or your pedigree or your lineage can get. You purchase the DNA kit and you swab the mouth of your dog. I believe there's two swabs and you just send in um, this, the DNA and then they test for uh, with great uh, precision with uh, laboratory results that are guaranteed. They're certified by the OFA and the CHIC. Not only that, you get something called the genetic coefficient of relationship or inbreeding. Um, and that is something else that I will explain in a different video. Uh, it basically, it just means um, the percentage of inbreeding that is within the lines of, of your uh, pedigree. So uh, obviously the more inbred a dog, the more likely they'll have genetic um, anomalies, right? So you want to keep that percentage very low. Uh, and these genetic tests will uh, provide you with that information. So you can go ahead and make sure that your stud and your dam breeding together will produce, you know, uh, genetically diverse uh, puppies. These are all things you need to know. See, the problem is um, backyard breeders, breeders who don't give a crap about this stuff, they are even hobby breeders. I don't want to say that they're all bad, but the majority do not do any of this testing because it's expensive. And that's another thing you need to consider. Remember that by breeding your female dog um, and having her get pregnant, you are risking her health to many, many things that could go wrong. And I don't want to say Murphy's Law, you know, Murphy's Law says what can go wrong will. Uh, it's That's a terrible way to think. but. Um, you need to be prepared. Prepare yourself for the worst case scenario. You need to know what to do if anything goes wrong. And there are so many things that can go wrong. So just get prepared for that. That is another video. All I can say is there are so many things that could go wrong. The, the puppies could be born um, in a not optimal position. So you have to know how to fix that without damaging your dam or your puppies uh, or her puppies and you need to know um, what to do if uh, she has mastitis or if she has uh, or she comes down with some sort of infection that affects her. I mean you're gonna have to make the tough decision of uh, aborting the puppies uh, if say something goes terribly wrong. Worst case scenario would be that she would have to be euthanized if the the birth is so terrible. The next thing you need to consider is acquiring a stud dog, the right stud dog for your dam to make sure that they produce the healthiest offspring. Um, you, this is, there's a pretty much, there's two ways of getting a stud dog. Uh, you can um, decide to just own one and, and outright buy a stud dog or you can uh, go and look into artificial insemination where you can acquire uh, semen um, from, say, a, a, a great pedigree or line. And this requires a lot of research to make sure that their pedigree and your pedigree or lineage uh, will go together properly. That's also testing, make, making sure that the other breeder of the, who has the stud dog has also done their due diligence with uh, testing and, and all of that and making sure you know that the dog or the stud dog doesn't have something that your your dam can um you know catch like like uh brucellosis or something like that right 
uh, these are all things you need to consider and, and uh, put trust into. Uh, you need to know this other breeder uh, who has this stud dog um, very well before you consider going ahead with a breeding program. The most important part of becoming a breeder is to make sure that you have the financial backup for all the things that you are deciding to do. You need to have the money. That's just the reality. Um, if you don't have enough money, don't become a breeder because you want to make sure you acquire them from good lines and other breeders who think the same way as you. They are ethical too. They've done all the testing. We don't need more dogs in this world who are unhealthy. The most uh, boring part of all of this is probably becoming very, very well read on uh, genetics and all of the other areas of whelping and care for your dam and their puppies and the puppies and your stud dog. You're going to have a lot of information coming from many different sources. So you need to have a critical thinking mind to make uh, the right decisions for your dogs. And you'll need a lot of time, especially when the puppies are born. You're not going to have any time. You're, you won't even be able to sleep. You will not have a sleep schedule at all. Because um, just imagine, you're actually bringing into the world minimum, I guess with a toy breed, what, two, three puppies? Probably that's easier, but um, with the larger the breed, the more puppies they whelp. So you're going to cut anywhere from average four, five, all the way up to, I've heard, 12, sometimes more. So imagine having a baby, right? It's just one. Imagine having 12. You know, times, all the time you're going to put into one puppy, you have to multiply that by how many are in the litter. So that's why this is not something uh, that is doable with a full-time job. Being very disciplined with record keeping is extremely important as a breeder. For you, you need to have very, very immaculate record keeping uh, skills. Uh, remember, you have all of these different souls. They are souls and they are all going to other people, other parents, other pet parents, pet families who are going to need this information, so you need to have it on hand and find it easily. You need to join all of the breed-specific uh, uh, member uh, local organizations, um, ethically bred uh, puppies on there that they are available and things like that. You also need to network with other breeders. Also joining the AKC and CKC, th those, those are all things that go into like the money investment and things like that. Not cheap. Nothing is cheap when it comes to pets. Going and finding quality owners is also not easy. Um, you need to screen them, um, letting them into your home, letting them see the puppies, see how they interact and how they answer your questions when, um, when you're deciding on which family will get what puppy. Uh, that's all, all of these things have to be taken into consideration. One more thing before I go, remember that your family is going to be disrupted their schedules are going to be disrupted. Whoever you live with will be disrupted. They will have to know the risks. They will have to know what's going to happen because you're the one who's deciding on doing this, right? So if you don't have their support, it's going to be an obstacle. If they are against it, don't bother because they will just become an obstacle. Either that or just either divorce them or don't live with them. Seriously, it is, you're, you're, it is really down to that. Okay, and that is it. The nine different facts you need to look at before you decide on breeding your bitch or dam.